growing food shortage fears. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee because, well, I want to talk about this growing food shortage fear that seems to be cropping up around the world. And we'll start by having a look at this article, or this, well, announcement from Augustin Farms. They're a emergency food provider. So they've shut down for 90 days as they can't fill food orders. Now, we have to realize there's a whole, a lot of things playing into this. You've got businesses that just haven't ramped up production back when, you know, last year, when there was fear of a global economic shutdown due to the pandemic. A lot of them scaled back. They didn't expand. They laid off people, and it's taking time to build back up. You've also got insane demand out there for a lot of these products. There's people concerned, people afraid, and you've got shipping issues. And, well, look at this picture. Look at what we're seeing here. We're obviously seeing you know, a food storage bucket or emergency kit. Where do you think that bucket comes from? Think about it. The plastic, the oil that's used to manufacture that, that's all gone up in price, and getting packaging is getting a lot harder. Then as well, we've got some fertilizers and shipping costs. So it's all it's all come to a head. You've got people scared. You've got uh, difficulty getting all well, the food stuff itself, then difficulty getting packaging. You've got transportation issues. So yes, let's have a look at this, everyone. Emergency flu- food supplier. Augustin Farms has ceased operations for 90 days, citing global raw material shortages and substantial delays in procurement and production. Now, we don't have emergency food storages. I'm kind of an ill-prepared prepper. We do have a a deep freeze freezer, and I have a little generator that I can use for camping or to keep it going if we lose power. And, you know, at the moment, we probably only have about a month's worth of supply because we're using the standing freezer, not the deep freeze because we're in the rental, we're not in the house here. But normally we have, at the peak, six months' worth of frozen food. Now, my only issue with a lot of this emergency package stuff is that it's full of seed oils, everyone. It's, it's It's the food from the aisles that you want to avoid. You know, when you go to the Coles or Woolies, you just go around the edge, the circle, the outside, all the fresh produce, the meat. You don't want to get any of the manufactured and packaged stuff in the middle because it lasts forever, but it's full of sugar and seed oils. They're, they're really, if you get one thing from my ramblings about food, avoid uh, avoid seed oils and sugar. That, that's that's all I'd suggest. Yeah, that Just take that away. Don't listen to any of my other stuff if you think I'm insane, but just take that away. Cut all the seed oils out, or look into how they make the stuff, guys. You know, if they, they can't press the, the product between two rocks, and that's it, it's, you know, I'd say... It's not that natural or healthy. You know. So, on their website, they've posted the following message. Due to an extremely high order volume through all sales channels, we are currently not able to receive any orders through our website. All orders previously placed will be shipped. So, they've just been flooded. They've just been flooded. But according to a message sent to customers, President Mark Augustin said, the lasting effects of COVID-19 has translated into global raw material shortages and caused substantial delays in the procurement and production process. The letter went on to confirm that they were suspending business for the next 90 days. One example that I'm uh, dealing with at the moment is my favorite cottage cheese at Aldi. (laughs) They can't get it. The supplier has had uh, issues due to COVID. So, I mean, kind of sucks, guys. (laughs) It's my favorite one. Just in salami. Perfect. I made myself hungry now. I haven't had breakfast. So, is the next manufactured crisis going to be an energy crisis? Well, <laughs> I, I don't know. See, here's the thing. People think it's manufactured. I'm more in line, uh, well, more inclined to believe it's, it's incompetence. I guess, you know, in a way it is manufactured, isn't it? Through incompetence and pushing for these unnecessary, unnecessary drives for energy. Have a look here. The supply chain is broken and it's not coming back anytime soon. Uh, and we have a look here. We warned you this was coming. Okay. So this, this is where they're, obviously, they've got an agenda here as a prepper website. And I mean, they're right. There are supply chain issues, but it is coming back faster than people realize. Honestly, I think it's going to be a year until we see everything go back to normal. We, we looked at another article 
where Walmart were hiring ships and were unloading the containers at ports that weren't traditionally you know, used for container capacity just to get product in, particularly for Christmas and Halloween. Now, here's another article that I want to look at. This is written by our very own uh, Tarek Brooker on news.com.au. Disaster looming in Aussie supermarkets. You've got to understand it, the... Well, let's, let's have a look at this, because it sounds scary, doesn't it? But then the scary stuff gets the eyeballs. A crisis with unprecedented consequences is likely to hit Australia, with shoppers being forced to make difficult decisions as prices skyrocket. Well, we are starting to see prices get more expensive. I, I put petrol in the tank the other day, guys. I just put 30 in. 30 in. Nearly a quarter of a tank nearly burned through it on one day. Uh, it's getting there, guys. It's getting there. In the run-up to the French Revolution, Queen Marie Antoinette allegedly uttered a now infamous phrase, let them eat cake, when confronted by the fact that French peasants could not afford bread. In one of history's little twists, Antoinette never did actually say those words, but the lack of a solution from the French monarchy to skyrocketing bread prices did play a major role in sealing her fate. But now, as the world attempts to come to terms with the consequences of the COVID pandemic and the government's response to the virus, there are some indicators that are looking increasingly similar to those of France prior to the revolution. Oh, I think some people would love a French revolution. (laughs) Oh, but then we'd we'd all have to be French. And they, they don't seem too happy at the moment, do they, over there? According to the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization, FAO, Food Price Index, the cost of food globally is currently at its highest since 73. While there are many factors that have contributed to rising prices, such as insect swarms and natural disasters, the impact from the pandemic is arguably the chief driving force. But aren't insects, you know, that, that's our new food that they all want us to eat in the Great Reset? This pea protein dystopian, you know, burger crap with crickets. I, I ate them. When we went up to Bribey, they had them at the museum there. You could eat crickets and all these things. And, yeah, no, that's that's not a future I want to live in, guys. <laughs> I still want to be able to get my steak. For Australians, some of you may have already noticed supermarket bills are steadily rising or the size of products are shrinking as companies attempt to come to terms with rising costs. Yes, we're seeing shrinkflation here in Australia. We're seeing shrinkflation over in the States as well. Now, I, I have the issue where I still have prices hard-coded in my brain from when I first moved out of home a long time ago now. And now Rachel does the shopping, so whenever I go shopping or go out, I'm always shocked at how expensive everything is. I bought Katmandu shoes yesterday, guys. Over 200 bucks for a pair of shoes. There you go. I, I guess that's normal. I had one staff member. He, he, this is story time. He, he would like those sneakers, like Nike sneakers or whatever, he would go out and wait in a queue to buy these shoes. I, I, I just couldn't relate. I couldn't understand. He'd go out there and wait to buy a pair of shoes. A male would wait in a queue to buy a pair of sneakers. There you go. I mean, I wasn't cool in the 80s. I'm definitely not cool now in the 2020s. But Maybe it's retro. In the U.S., the wholesale cost of food products has risen by 8.3% in the past year, far outstripping wage growth in the CPI. So the energy crisis. When the world was initially plunged into lockdown in March last year, energy prices swiftly fell off a cliff. In an event that will likely be talked about for decades to come, oil prices actually went negative as certain as contract holders were forced to pay others to take millions of barrels of oils off their hand. Natural gas and coal prices were also hit by the pandemic, although not to the same degree as the oil market. As a result of plummeting energy prices and energy production, nations slashed production in an attempt to put a floor under prices. Despite demand for oil recovering towards pre-pandemic levels, OPEC has been rescindant to ramp up production. As a result, oil prices now sit at their highest level since 2014, and there is increasing speculation among energy analysts that it could continue to rise, potentially hitting US 100 a barrel. For natural gas, the story is even more dire. In Europe, some natural gas price indexes have risen by up to 895%, and these higher costs are wreaking havoc with industry and households exposed to the rising costs. The link between energy prices and food prices. Despite its generally green reputation, 
Fertilizer is often manufactured using hydrocarbons such as natural gas. Yeah, th- this is this is one thing to consider when you're going down a purely vegan diet for well environmental reasons. You're actually not doing anything. You, you're have, you're the equivalent like living hardcore veganism for an entire year is equal to the carbon credit credits that cost five dollars, five bucks, everyone. So if, if you want to be as good as a vegan or better than a vegan and still eat all your meat and live a life like a normal person and just go out and preach about carnivore to everyone like a crazy person instead of veganism, you can have by $6 worth of carbon credits. You know, just get some carbon abatement credits you know, from one of the programs that supports in indigenous uh, burning off. You know, go for it. Then you'll get, you'll get social justice credits too because you help and employ people in the middle of nowhere. It's a win-win, guys. A win-win. As Europe attempts to come to grips with skyrocketing gas prices, some fertilizer manufacturers have suspended production and closed their plants. This has put an even greater strain on an already challenging fertilizer market for farmers and other food producers. With crop plantings postponed due to the pandemic and farmers looking to take advantage of high food prices, the demand for fertilizer was already strong. Now, as gas prices continue to impact production, Fertilizer prices have joined other commodities in setting off for the stratosphere. According to the Green Markets North American Fertilizer Price Index, the cost of fertilizer is currently at record highs, eclipsing its 2008 highs recorded during the last strong inflationary episode. Due to its due to current rising in prices, Bloomberg Green Market analysts are forecasting the cost of U.S. corn production to increase by 16%. With more fertilizer plant closures possible, as producers attempt to come to grips with rocketing gas prices, fertilizer prices may continue to head ever higher as the impact of reduc- reduced production hits the markets. So are you feeling the, the f- freeze? No, thankfully it hasn't impacted me. Yes, prices seem to be creeping up. Okay, this is a poll they want to ask. I mean, that, that's, that's, I'll put that on my channel as well. We'll see if you're feeling prices impacting you. We're, I'm noticing it. I'm noticing it and I don't go shopping, everyone. And I'm not one of these blokes that like goes through the credit card and everything and sees what the wife is spending. I'm noticing prices going up. Gas prices, fertilizer, and your grocery bill. So, if the increased costs of fertilizer feeds into an already expensive food commodity market, developing nations are likely to feel the pinch the strongest. Unlike wealthy nations, where less of the cost of a food product is the fresh produce itself, in the developing world, the produce itself makes up a significant, significantly larger proportion of the overall costs to consumers. If fertilizer prices continue to rise, as feared, Australians are likely to see their grocery bills rise more swiftly than we've become accustomed to goo, as farmers pass on higher cost of productions. With many of us already feeling the pinch at the petrol pump, yep, higher grocery prices would be most unwelcome hit to household budgets, particularly those employed in industries still struggling to recover from the pandemic. And I was at a, we were at a party the other day, or a play date, a play date for T21 kids, and I was talking to, to a few of the other parents, and, you know, I was explaining to one guy how, he, you know, he hadn't been affected by the pandemic. He works in the energy sector, pricing uh, pricing power production for some of the state governments. So we had a good chat, actually. I, I was interested to get his opinion on some things. But, you know, I was saying this is the thing, the issue we've got here in Australia. Some people are going, going gangbusters. They're not affected. They're not impacted at all. But then you've got other people that have to take to the streets because their businesses are getting destroyed. And then you've got the people who aren't impacted telling them, oh, just sit at home. You know, they don't get it. It's exacerbating the divide here in Australia. 2021 has seen some enormous moves in commodity prices from lumber to iron. Prices setting off to the moon has become almost normal. If fertilizer prices do continue to hit new record highs, the world may face a challenging road ahead and Australia may find themselves with a bit less in their pockets after their weekly shop. Ultimately, High global food prices are a key indicator for rising levels of social unrest. Hopefully this time the global political and economic elite have a better strategy than telling the lower classes to eat cake. So there we go. I like the anecdotes he always uh, works into his articles. You know, and it, I think it makes it quite well, relatable to a lot of people. And he's bringing economic concepts to the masses. Although he, he does tend to, Tarek does tend to have a bit of a, well, let's just say a... a uh, or concerned perspective. Let's uh, let's have a bit of a talk about this. 
So what would I suggest? Is it time we all become preppers and store food? Well, it's probably not a bad idea having some extra supplies, training yourself to go without, and, well, I'd recommend looking at what foodstuffs you can purchase that aren't so dependent on fertilizers. But, you know, with petrol going up, it's going to flow through everywhere. And even cattle, even the ones that are grain-fed, it's going to drive up the cost of that. Then we'll make your grass-fed even more expensive. So I don't think you can avoid it. Hopefully, this will only be a temporary measure, but I can see all of these costs and issues taking about a year to flow through the economy. So it's going to be awesome. What do you reckon? As always, thank you for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this one. If you're a fan of the channel, enjoy the content I find and put together here. There are a few ways you can help out. You can join us on our Heiser Says live channels on Twitch or YouTube Live. You can also support us financially by joining us on YouTube or Patreon. Sign up for our links using Self Wealth or Stake. Use our affiliate links at Amazon, eBay, Independent Reserve or Aussie Broadband. Buy our merch, use Gold Pass or support us via PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. I'll see you next time.